Hey everyone, this is Rob. Hey, I'm Michelle. And welcome to Boon Babe, your weekly podcast on everything you need to know about old school RuneScape. All right, so this week up on the hot topic, we have <laughs> our account progress. Um, I have not been playing much, but at least I think Michelle has, so we'll have some I stuff have. to go over. <laughs> but we will uh, update you on all the stuff that we've been doing this week and kind of talking about that. And then we will be going over straight into the ninth birthday. So there's yeah. pretty exciting. Happy birthday, RuneScape or old school. I didn't know it was happening. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, right? They kind of just snuck up on us. I know. Like, it wasn't that long ago that it was their eighth birthday, but true. apparently it is OSRS's ninth birthday and they have a little event going on. So we'll be discussing that. And then yes. we have the actual update this week. So not a ton, but also definitely a lot more than I would have thought going okay. on this week. So um, that's good. Yeah, it's actually uh, I don't know why I said not a lot because this is actually kind of a lot. Oh, um, OK. So you're a liar. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty <laughs> much a liar. There's actually a ton to go over. And this is a pretty exciting, especially for anyone that enjoys PvP at all or oh. ever plans on doing it. This is going to be kind of a big deal for them. So. All right. Nice. Yeah, so that's going to be pretty cool. So we're going to go over all of that, and then we'll finish with the poll that was pulled earlier this week. I think it is poll 76, I believe. Yeah. And we'll be talking about that, what they are proposing, and everything in between. And then we'll be finishing off with just a question or two. Okay. I have a question for the poll. Has it already been released yet? Has I thought poll... that they were just talking about it, and it's not. You, you can't vote yet. No, no. There's no actual voting. Oh, okay. Cool. No, no. Just making sure yet. I wasn't misunderstanding. No, it's just the blog for the poll. It's not the actual poll. So okay, a little yeah. clarification for everyone. Yeah. So they're still discussing it and stuff like that. But we're gonna go over what they are planning on um, adding to the game and actually pulling in the game once we get to that part. Perfect. Yeah. But before we get into anything, of course, as always, Michelle, how's it going? Pretty well. I have like not been playing leagues at all this week. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, neither of us has spoiler alert. Yeah. Big <laughs> spoiler alert. I kind of already said that. Yeah, basically. Um, but I have been playing on my main a little bit. I started falling in love with Zolcano all over again. Oh no. Yeah. So Zolcano's been fun. I've I'm at like six hundred and something kill count. I was already at six hundred and something, but you know, closer to seven now. Yeah, the unrequited love. It's not unrequited. Zolcano loves me too. Oh, okay. Then yeah. why haven't you got the pet? Because we're waiting. We decided to wait to have kids. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I feel like Zolcano already has a kid and you're like the step parent like slowly moving into their life. Oh my gosh. That's what yes. I mean, yeah, you're that's right. what I'm saying. Yeah, the kid's like <laughs> almost fully grown. No, it's small Kano. It's tiny. A small Kano. Yeah, I saw somebody got the pet yesterday at 18 kill count while I was there. And that wasn't you? No. Why not? And then they stayed playing and everyone was like, bro, go insure your pet, please. <laughs> Because no. I saw a lot of people die yesterday, Just too. risk it for the biscuit. No. I feel like I'd be so excited about a pet, I would just immediately get crushed by a bunch of rocks because I'd be <laughs> staring at the pets. <laughs> yeah, just, like, actually die immediately. Yeah. That would be so sad. Can you imagine? Yeah. I've seen people get, like, Zolra pets or, um, yeah, like, Vorkath pets, and then, because they can deal damage to you after the fact, mm -hmm. I think Zolra can, or I've definitely seen Vorkath, and they'll get the pet and then, like, die as they get it That's or something like that just devastating i'd be so upset yeah or they'll like die as they're killing the boss and then the <sighs> boss's loot will show up as they're like in the dying screen no. and it'll be like a pet or like i mean i've definitely seen people like get like rare drops that just disappear as soon as they die I'm so. like, bro if i'm dead just don't even tell me what i was gonna get <laughs> i don't need yeah. to know just like make my screen go black immediately yes please <laughs> it's a secret no one has to know yeah exactly <laughs> But yeah, I uh, was doing some Zolcano. What else was I doing? This is all my main. I don't remember if I said that. Yeah, I was playing my main. This weekend, I kind of was like taking a break from computer games. I played a little bit of Among Us and Phasma with some people. Shout out, hey, adorable. But then I was like, all right, I kind of don't want to be at my desk anymore. Yeah. So I just like played Animal Crossing and I spent probably hours this weekend just digging up flowers and throwing them away my island has been overtaken by flowers honestly yeah it is an issue yeah so i went and just like dug up a bunch of them and i want to spend more time decorating the island but i don't know what i want to do yet yeah you really like animal crossing animal crossing is really fun for anyone that doesn't know she like doesn't play it on stream or anything like that, but she has probably played more Animal Crossing than any other game ever of all time. I don't think more than RuneScape. 
Are you sure? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't think I don't it's know. physically possible for me to have played more than RuneScape. The thing is, you play Animal Crossing more daily. Well, even okay. if it's like not for a very long amount of time, I'll play it more daily, but then I'll stream RuneScape for like six hours. Yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll, then I'll say like in the past few months, I it's feel like, like my second definitely... most played game. Yeah, I, we can confidently say this. Yeah, for sure. Okay. <laughs> I uh, was also playing like some more Phasmo. Phasmo has been fun. I've been having some weird Phasmo dreams though, so that's been interesting. Yeah. Um, ghosty dreams. A little ghosty, because sometimes in Phasmo, like they do like hunts and the ghosts are like chasing you, and that's when you die in the game. Yeah. And I've never done this because it seems so risky. But some people will like just let the ghost see them and they'll just like run in a circle around like a table or something and nice. the ghost can't get them. I think it's called looping. And in my dreams, I'm trying to do that. But these ghost hunts last like 20 minutes. And I'm like, how is it still chasing me? Like you should have disappeared by now. So you're just like an athlete. Just yeah. like outrunning this track star ghost. Yes, that's actually exactly what is happening. Okay. And it's stressful and I'm always fighting it. But you know, in dreams, oh, I don't know if you guys have this. It feels like you can't run. Yeah. And you're weak. You can't do anything. It's no, really that, annoying. That's never happened to me. You never feel weak in dreams? No, I never run. I never do anything in dreams. It's just like a glimpse of what I'm dreaming. You don't have vivid dreams, huh? No, of course yeah. not. Oh, I think it's my antidepressants give me vivid dreams. No, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I almost never remember my dreams. If I do, it's like once every five years. What? Yeah. You remembered your dream last night, though. Uh, yeah, because it was, like, uh, more stressful. It was, like, weird. Yeah, I had a dream that he was, like, a gym thief. Yeah, it was, like, smuggling <laughs> was magic gems in or it. something. And yeah, there was magic. It was really weird. Uh, you've been watching too much D&D videos. I know. I was watching... <laughs> I've been watching a lot of uh, Critical Role. For anyone that doesn't know, that's, like, probably... Not not probably. It is the most popular Dungeons & Dragons um, playthrough campaign or um, people that play campaigns in Dungeons & Dragons. And... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they have like millions and millions of views and subscribers and stuff like that. And so Jeez. I just caught up to the newest. Um, so they're on campaign three, which is like season three, essentially. And they're up to like episode 12 or 13. And I finally just caught up the other day. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, their sessions are like three or four hours. So that was like a lot to catch up. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, I've been watching a lot of that. But now that I'm caught up, I mean, I only watch it once every every week. So. And she's giving him bad dreams in the meantime. No, not even. I've been I've been <laughs> brushing up and watching a lot of like Dungeons and Dragons stuff. One because it's really cool and interesting, and two because we have another session tomorrow. So, oh yeah, we do. Yeah, I forgot. I always like to not not just for because it's like cool and interesting, but I like to just I, I think it's really cool and interesting. So I like to uh, get ideas for like future campaigns that I might end up doing, or if like I, the future RuneScape one. Uh, I mean, yeah, maybe potentially, <laughs> but yeah, there's so many like really cool books for like special or specific campaigns that are like just really, really cool. Like the ideas and there's like special classes that you can get with them and stuff like that. So I've been like reading more into it and uh, there's a lot of really good content creators for that stuff. So that's cool. He's been getting really, really into D&D &D videos. Yeah, D&D &D is really cool. I didn't know that it was actually so I knew it was popular to an extent but you i didn't know how think, popular i didn't think it was as popular as it is <laughs> because it seems like everyone like deep down has some kind of like nerdism about them that they can relate to D D to some extent oh yeah of course <laughs> especially because like i think it's unique in a way that because it is role playing it is very easy to become so highly invested in it that um it's like because you are this character. Yeah, essentially, because like you literally become someone else, which is one like uh, like interesting and freeing for a lot of people, but mm -hmm. also just like really cool because obviously it's not real. So there's like a lot of like funny and cool stuff that you can like get into. And I think there's no risk. Yeah, exactly. And I think <laughs> it, it, it appeals to a lot of a lot more people than I would have normally have thought of. So would you recommend Dungeons and Dragons to people? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's hard to recommend like super social stuff like that right now. But um, I mean, if I you can do it online, that's how we do it. That's what I was. Yeah, yeah, we do it online. But I was telling my friends, I was like, I really wish that 
I mean, obviously I could still do this while taking precautions and it wouldn't be a big deal. But I was saying I really wish that I could just like go and meet up with a bunch of other like nerds and <laughs> just like have random like campaigns or like one shots with other people that like want to play D&D &D and stuff like that. That'd I, be really fun. Because they have like local shops that you can go to and people have like um, like stuff like that all the time. So And San Diego's home to Comic-Con. You just know there's tons of those here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. How did we even get into D&D &D from this conversation? We're talking about the OSRS D&D &D stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, what what else have I been doing on my account? Right now I'm doing a farming run because I'm like, what if I got Tango Root and I could tell you guys, wow, I got Tango Root while I stream. And I'm <laughs> streaming while I record. Yeah. Wouldn't that be crazy? That would be actually crazy. <laughs> because it's not going to happen. It's Yeah. It's yeah, he no, says? No, I was going to say, it's, it's kind of unfortunate that... Um, because, like, you were kind of, like, going to be talking about leagues, but you haven't really done anything on leagues. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, one of those things where um, I don't really feel bad about it, but I can see my opportunity, like, slipping away. To get Dragon? To get, well, to get anything of note, really. And it's, I'm, like, kind of okay with it. Okay, I would like to say for myself that I don't think I'm done with leagues. Yeah. I think I will do more because I want more rewards. Okay. But I'm not going to be aiming for a specific trophy. Like, even, like, on stream lately, people have been asking about leagues. And I'm like, I'm not done. I'm just, like, taking a break because it kind of just feels like people got way too high of levels and a little bit like it's impossible to catch up. So I'm like, all right, well, I'll just go for the rewards I want and whatever. Yeah. It's, it's unfortunate because of the way everything lined up. I was, like... Lost Art came out. Lost Art came it. out. And I have put, like way more than two works work weeks worth of time into that game in one week yeah and so it's just kind of unfortunate the timing and also the fact that there's just other people that play runescape way more than me like even if that's all i did all day somehow there would be people that I know, play we're more. literally unemployed and play games all day and still people will do more yeah it's, it's <laughs> actually crazy and like spoiler alert later on i'm going to tell you what the rankings are now but the rankings are even more ridiculous oh now. god okay like it's it's actually I like previously I didn't know how you could get this many points. Now I'm just convinced the all dragons are getting every task done. Until next week when it's even more. Yeah, until next <laughs> week when it's even more and they just invented new tasks or something. You know, maybe next year leagues will be better because we'll be we'll be more experienced with stuff. This year we don't have the most experience with end game stuff. No, for the most part, this is both of our first time. Yeah. And all the point stuff that we're doing, we're doing like more of the skilling and stuff. I know that everyone getting like dragon, they're probably like doing speed runs and chambers and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And that's like we don't are. experience and obviously we could try, but uh, it'd be hard to catch up. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know. It just seems like kind of both of us are taking it's like a little bit of a lull for both of us mm -hmm. in the game where we're just more interested in other games right now. Yeah, which is... I'm still interested in this, but. I guess in the same way it is a different game. I'm interested in my main mo again. Yeah. Yeah. Which, I uh, which I mean, is still good because at least that's a, still RuneScape. I just haven't played RuneScape in like an entire week. No. Yeah. It's really weird. Yeah. I should play my GIM sometime too. Been neglecting that. I know. You haven't played your GIM at all. You haven't either. And you're making a video series. So that's crazier. Eh. That's fine. <laughs> your leagues video, you're going to have an update whenever leagues done. Be like, so I played for three more hours in the end. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't even know if I'll update. I, haven't, I, haven't, I don't have any plans for it right now. I mean, are you... It's not done for like another month. Do you think you'll go back to leagues to get more points? Uh, Potentially. I mean, I don't want to say yes just because I am like really invested in Lost Ark and having like a lot of fun with that right now. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to say yes and then actually just not yeah. do anything. You could just do the AFK scaling and just get the 99 tasks. Yeah, the thing is, it's like really hard to AFK... RuneScape while playing Lost Ark because I don't know anything about Lost Ark. Lost Ark is like very involved. There's like barely any time where you're just like playing with one hand or something. Oh. So it it'd be like kind of crazy to to do both. <laughs> it'd be like the equivalent of playing like six accounts at the same time. Oh my god. Just because like there's like I said there's like barely any downtime. Maybe whenever you're taking a boat to certain places, then you could, but that's like 
a, a couple minutes here and there, like every four hours or something. Yeah, I haven't played Lost Ark, so I don't know. I, I tried playing it a little bit on his computer before when he was like taking a shower, and I just made a character, and then I was like, okay, this makes me want to go play my other games. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It's hard whenever you're like really into a game to try to get into new games. You're like, well, I really just want to play the other one. Yeah, no, okay. exactly. Speaking of, I tried playing Stardew Valley and Robert thinks I don't like it. She doesn't like it. No, it's because I was playing Animal Crossing and I was in the Animal Crossing grind when I tried it. And every time I was playing it, I was I was thinking about like building areas and stuff. And I was like, well, I kind of want to build more on my island in Animal Crossing. Yeah, she doesn't like it. No, I don't I don't know enough about it yet. I played it when I was like half asleep at 2.30 in the morning the other day. And my little character passed out because I overworked her. Yeah. I didn't know what would happen. They were like, she's getting tired. And I was like, let's keep working and see how this goes. She literally almost died from exhaustion. Yeah, that was funny. I got a note in the mail. They're like, don't do that ever again. So I'm going to drop you off at the hospital. Jeez. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, I've just been playing all sorts of games. Taking breaks from games, just having a really weird week for gaming, I would say. Yeah, okay. And I'm hoping to maybe make a video soon. I really, really want to. I feel like I've been slack a lacking. I was thinking about making a birthday walkthrough for the birthday. So yeah. we'll see if I end up doing that. You're going to do it on the GIM or something? I if would do it on the GIM if I did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to do that, but potentially. <laughs> yeah it's pretty cool it does have a reward and we're gonna go over that soon yes but. we will but oh yeah i've also been streaming and reminder i stream every day except for thursdays and saturdays eight o'clock pacific standard time come hang out with me yep twitch.tv slash boon babe yes because i never know what to do on my account that's why i started doing volcano <laughs> gang because i was like i don't know what to do so if anyone wants to come like do bossing with me or something hit me up <laughs> yeah, you just like do mini games forever. Yeah, I mean, I like Zolcano, so I don't mind. Zolcano and Barbarian Assault are like two of my favorite ones, I'd say. Yeah. But yeah. That's cool. Uh, what have you been up to? I mean, you kind of already said, but you yeah. can tell everyone a little bit about Lost Ark. Yeah, not too much. I mean, I haven't played literally any RuneScape. Like, I don't even think I've opened it once. Jeez. Not just RuneScape, but I haven't opened or played any other games <laughs> um, since last week. And last week, I think the game had been out for one day. Yeah. And now the game's been out for, yeah, a week. So there's been a lot going on. I ended up getting my character to the max level. And Jeez. I also have two other characters that are the max level. And um, I've, I've gotten pretty far. So, like... I don't this this won't matter to anyone, but it matters to me. Yeah. But um I don't know. Like I mean, I'm sure there's people that play Lost Ark that listen. Lost Ark's like popping right now. I guess so, yeah, <laughs> probably. But for anyone that knows or cares, I'll just say that I've gotten to like tier two armor, which is like eight hundred gear score out of Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, out of like fifteen hundred, so I'm like more or less halfway there. But the the initial grind is very fast and then it gets very, very slow later on. So Sounds I'm like yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I'm expecting it to slow down quite a bit, but that's why I made other characters. So that'll be um, fun to get on. And it's nice to like change up the characters every once in a while because I'm playing like a monk where you go and, like punch enemies. It's actually pretty <laughs> cool because Michelle won't get this reference. But for anyone that watches Dragon Ball Z ever, um, my character shoots like uh, or like Street Fighter. My character shoots like uh, spirit balls out of his hands that are kind of like Hadoukens from Ryu in uh, Street Fighter. And then my super ability is like a literally a spirit bomb from Dragon Ball Z. I thought you were going to say the Buddha hand one. No, I do have like a giant Buddha hand that comes out of the sky and like crushes enemies. That's kind of cool. It's not very Buddha esque, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Michelle, Michelle won't get the reference, but I won't um, use it all that. And I was like, Mm, I know yeah, Buddha hand. Like like Goku in Dragon Ball Z becomes like Oh, don't even get me started, strong. bruh. You know nothing. You've never seen a, I've only seen like five Goku? episodes of it. Are you kidding me? Okay, we're skipping. Your this. boy? So I have a tattoo of We him. are gonna be moving on to <laughs> the ninth birthday because Michelle doesn't know anything um about oh, anything the ninth birthday event. Hey, yes I do. I did it. You didn't even do it. No, that was a joke. Obviously, mm -hmm. you're the only one of, <laughs> between the two of us that's done the an event. Attitude. I'm sorry, we're having a screaming match right wow, now. Wow, so she's <laughs> clearly defensive because she didn't like the birthday event. I liked it, actually. It was cute. I like all the little events. So, for the ninth birthday event, it's Old School RuneScape's ninth birthday, and we're celebrating with a grand party in Alcrete. But as per usual, something has gone horribly wrong. As per usual. 
actually, psych, we've just been informed that nothing has gone wrong and everyone's having a lovely time. It's a birthday miracle. So spoilers up ahead, everyone. Skip a few minutes if you don't want to hear about this birthday thing. Yeah, it's an event that is taking place in El Creed. So if you want to go check it out for yourself without being spoiled, I'd recommend going and doing that and coming back in like, I don't know, five to ten minutes. Yes, probably less. But we'll probably, probably, less. <laughs> probably closer to five. All right. Well, since there's no monkeys to chase, cat ears to craft or cakes to bake, you might as well kick back and enjoy the party. Why not go on a treasure hunt, join a cook off or partake in a spot of fishing? Just head to Alkari to join the festivities. And the reward for this, I thought was actually really cute. You're going to be rewarded with a brand new pair of skis, perfect for coasting over the dunes of the Caribbean desert in style. Yeah, so it's, it's like really actually cute. literally a pair of ski poles and uh, skis themselves. It's so literally you can, skis. Yeah, you can just like go I was just skiing around El Creed. <laughs> and they also add that. Adventures are warned that skis have not been tested in cold climates and ultra performance is not guaranteed. The old school runescape team is not liable for any injuries incurred as a result of using skis outside of the Caribbean desert. We shouldn't have you read that and like speed up your voice so it'd be like one of those infomercials. I should, yeah. Yeah, well, I, it's Remind like. Reminder to future Michelle in your editing. It's like a, it's like one of those lawyer uh, infomercials. <laughs> you where may at die. The, <laughs> at the very, very, very end of the infomercial, they're all like, oh, all of this is like not actual lawyer information. Yep. or <laughs> And they just skip <laughs> like, through This really has not fast. really been tested. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I thought it was really cute. And I actually was like laughing whenever I like got the skis. And I thought it was really funny because your character just sounds insane when you're talking to Hassan in the beginning. You go to Hassan to start it. Because uh, he's like, yeah, we're having this birthday event. And you're like, oh, there's a bunch of monkeys trying to take over and all this. And he's just like, what are you talking about? Everything's fine. <laughs> and then he's like, go enjoy the festivities. So it's literally just you going and actually just enjoying the festivities. That's weird. Yeah. You don't need to have any issues. And of oh, course, like you have, really to do, you have to do little favors for people naturally. But it's actually one small favor. Yeah. No, it's like there's like one favor in the entire thing. But uh, I thought it was really cute. I liked it quite a lot. That's cool. Yeah. So yeah, maybe we'll come up with a video for that. Is it is pretty short. It was really <laughs> short. That's like all they even wrote on it. Um. Yeah. Exactly. So that is all they wrote on it. But moving on to the next part of the birthday update, there was a bit of a leagues update. And so, like I said, if you felt like you were far away from any of your goals last week, be prepared to feel worse. As far as league rankings go, like I said, this week is no different. Because Dragon Rank is now 35,000 points. Jeez. So that's a 5,000 point increase from last week. Uh, Rune is 23,000. So only 3,000 increase there. Adamant is 11,000. Mithril is 4,000. Steel is 1,600. And Iron is 480 points. So I'm Mithril. I would like to get Adamant just because the difference between Mithril and Adamant is so huge. <laughs> yeah, it 4, is. 4,000 to 11,000. Yeah, that, that is, it is really big. Yeah. Um, they also made it so that whenever you whenever you purchase the Corind 2 or the Corind 3 bundles, you'll now have access to um, additional Cardist memoirs that will just automatically be put into your oh, good. Uh, book. I so, did yeah. notice that. Yeah, so that's pretty nice. Also, whenever you do uh, craft a crystal body or legs at the singing bowl, it'll now actually count for crafting a piece of armor, as it didn't before for some reason. That's annoying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And finally, the Ceridomus defense effect is now correctly applied in PvP. Nice. So besides that, they did leak, uh, like purposely leak, a few things last week about the League's three medals. So for anyone that doesn't know, we talked about it last week. It has a pretty cool blue lanyard. And these with, are real life medals. They, they are real life as if they're like trying to mimic the um, Olympics the Olympics or something <laughs> like that. This could get mailed to you. And um, the bluish lanyard does have RuneScape stuff on it. And then the actual medals themselves are colored gold, silver, and bronze. I don't know why they put them out of order here. They did. Kinda, they did gold, bronze, silver. Yeah. It's different in England. It, it looks cool, though. <laughs> it, it says Leagues, three Shattered Relics. They look really pretty. And they look pretty official. But um, they didn't tell us what they were for last week. This time around, they have let us know some official stuff. So they said that the first set of medals do have gold, silver, and bronze versions for the first, second, and third places in the following categories. So there's only four categories, and each will have a first, second, and third place for the most League points, most tasks completed, most XP gained, and the first to max. That one's already been decided. Uh, yeah, so they do, <laughs> they do go through and say that a few of these, even the next ones I mentioned, have already been decided, but they're not going to announce the winners until the end of the league. Yeah. 
As for the second set of medals, they are only going to have the gold variant. You can only be a winner in this set. There is no second or third place. Okay. And this is for the most dedicated of players, for the first to obtain all fragments, first to unlock all skills, first to unlock all bosses, first to reach tier seven, and finally the first to reach tier seven without hit points. <laughs> they should like a super gold one for that. Yeah, that one is pretty crazy. That just means that you've either done no bossing to get to tier seven or... Or you're you are, a pure account, basically. Yeah, or you just are really good at bossing with no no hit points. It's the thing. I mean, you could definitely do it because, I mean, usually this would be very hard, if not impossible, because you wouldn't really be able to get a prayer because usually you'd like keep your combat low and stuff like that to get your actually i don't know no, i'm sure people got like max except for hit points yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i feel like it's just like harder in the main game to not get your hit points up at all i mean with leagues it's different because you have all these bonuses and sets and stuff that stuff won't hit you as hard yeah well yeah no that's what i'm saying like this is i don't know i don't know it sounds hard obviously but i could Definitely see that being really, no. I mean, like, ten HP cool. is like pretty crazy, but I don't know. I don't know. I actually don't know where I was going with that. But yeah, all good. <laughs> yeah, they continue to say that uh, although some of the milestones, like I said, have already been achieved, they'll be waiting until the leagues is over to confirm the winners. Should you be among them, they'll contact you via your player inbox, not your email or anything like that. So make sure to check your in-game inbox. They're gonna be hitting you up in French chat from a random messenger. <laughs> no don't trick people like just, that they just need your social security number your password and your birthday okay <laughs> also they do continue to say that remember the leagues has been extended so there's still time to compete for those tasks earn those league points and put yourself in the running if you miss out on one of those prizes then stress not an antique nickel variant of the medal will be coming to the merch store so you can buy your own consolation <laughs> prize if you really want that's actually really funny that's actually funny i like that yeah, I feel like at that point that's just a uh, like a a, a relic. It's of like memorabilia. The yeah, <laughs> just a uh, yeah, little souvenir. A little souvenir. I did leaks three, and all I got was this lousy antique nickel medal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, as far as everything else goes, there were a few different changes. Um, just very small changes. One that might be of note is the recommended combat level for Land of the Goblins has been increased from sixty to sixty-five. I guess the combat was a little more um difficult or dicey mm -hmm. than people originally thought so. i actually did that quest i could talk about once you're all done reading these no yeah that's the last gonna be yeah. How, what'd you think of it oh uh yeah no i thought it was actually really fun yeah. i enjoyed it i won't say any spoilers but like the if you're paying attention to the quest it's actually really interesting oh uh, that's cool yeah i would definitely recommend reading through it like knowing what's going on i i loved it i did the little mini quest afterwards too I tried to do both these without quest guides and I frustrated everyone on stream because I started doing predictions on the stream. Yeah. Which basically means you could bet points on two different options. And I was like, oh, do you think I'll finish this quest within like 15 more minutes? Because I was near the end. And a lot of people lost points because they believed in me and I did not. Yeah, I'm never actually voting for her again. So. Yeah. And the mini quest, I was like, do you think I could do this short mini quest and toy minutes are under? And everyone was voting yes. And I could not. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> could not but they were both really cool and they have really nice rewards yeah and i am so excited for the last lane of the goblin quest now cool. the last goblin quest <laughs> all right uh so that's pretty cool that's gonna be about it for the update this week though that was the ninth birthday as well as the changes to leagues and stuff like that so as always if you are interested in seeing any of these changes for yourself uh, the written actual notes will be in the description below on the YouTube video of this. Or if you want to check it out, just go head over to the OSRS news section. Mm -hmm. uh, moving on to the upcoming arena PVP changes. So this is, of course, for the um, the fight dual fight arena. arena, the dual arena. And um, these are the changes that they are going to be introducing. Instead of the dual arena, they are just going to be completely removing that. But uh, there wow. is quite a bit of actually really interesting stuff here and it's um actually a lot of stuff we're not going to be going over all of it because we'd be here for pretty much ever oh but okay yeah there's just there's just a lot a lot of i stuff. didn't realize it was like that yeah it's it's like a lot of um kind of the same stuff so they have like a bunch of variants of gear they're going to be putting in and so i don't think we need to cover all that we can just kind of like touch base on what each one will be used for okay 
But as far as the actual patch, they say breaking news. The Emir of Al Qurid has been made aware of illicit activity going on in the glorious old battlegrounds, formerly known as the Dual Arena. <laughs> as a result, all fights are now overseen by the guards of Al Qurid. With this increased security, the locals feel safer approaching the area even when watching the actions. The tribunes are busier than ever before, with crowds cheering for the fighters below. Word spreads fast, and challengers from all parts of the world have come to Al Qurid to fight in the now reputable venue. People used to shy away from it, knowing that a scrape in the duel arena could lead down a dark path. Now, for the first time in a long time, a victory here may actually be seen as prestigious. <laughs> dang, okay. Yeah. Well, Shots back fired. Into, dang. Um, so they have the basics. Last year, we made a number of changes to the Duel Arena in effort to reduce the amount of real world training or real world trading and scamming that went on there. These were short term measures to tide us over. Today, we're here to share the actual replacement with you. It's going to be called the PvP Arena. Ooh. It's going to be known by Alcaridians as the Emir's Arena. Gives players an opportunity to fight each other in a controlled environment where matches take place on an alternative save game world against players of a similar skill level. You'll be able to register your interest in finding a fight and then get on with whatever other activities you want until the match has been prepared. Sounds interesting. It's like a matchmaking yeah, <laughs> for you to fight. It, it is exactly that. So it's it's pretty cool. Um, there's going to be an entire separate chat channel, clan channel, and group iron side panel. And you'll be able to see the grouping side panel. This was originally created in 2014 to help players group together for mini games. Um, obviously, this is what you would use to teleport to um, I any... I use it for Nightmare Zone. Nightmare the Zone. The minigame teleports. Fishing trawler, pest control, stuff like that. All the stuff um, you don't want to run to. Exactly. It now has an extra PvP arena button, which opens up the new side panel for the PvP arena. Uh, clicking the PvP arena button will open the side panel, replacing the group side panel. And it looks um, pretty simple. It just has a find button on it. Oh, and you'll be easy. able to find a match, whether you're looking for official 1v1 tournament groups, official 1v1 duels groups, or you can find a group by name. Nice. Um, besides this, this is honestly great because I think in general, um, all games that have PvP should be on an equal playing field. And that's actually what they're introducing here. I like that a lot. So it's not like someone's a level three going versus like a maxed account. Yeah. So everything is going to be normalized here. Like they said, they are putting you into a separate world, kind of like how leagues is. You have your main account, but once you hop to the leagues world, you are on your leagues profile. Yeah. So this one says that they're going to so be... So you don't lose stuff. Yeah, precisely. Okay. So it's just for fun. I like that. Um, No, there actually is oh. going to be rewards as well. But oh. it, it is going to be for fun. Uh, it says No that... fun allowed, actually. <laughs> <laughs> precisely. So because the fights take place on an alternative save world, your standard game profile is left behind along with all your levels and items. Instead, you'll be giving the following stats. So you're going to be getting 50 attack, strength, ranged magic, 70 defense, 99 prayer, agility, and hit points. You can even specialize into a primary combat style. Each style offers improved stats that suit your preferred choice. The available options are melee with 85 attack and 85 strength, ranged with 95 range, mage with 95 mage. Wait, Once so it even changes your levels? Yeah, so that's it, so interesting. Yeah, it'll give you all of these base levels, and then if you want, you can specialize in melee, ranged, or mage. Yeah, and it says once you've picked a primary combat style, you'll then need to select a secondary style. This cannot be the same as your primary style, and the options below are melee, which is seventy attack and eighty strength, ranged, which is eighty ranged, and mage, which is eighty magic. So that's pretty interesting. You're going to be able to. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to select which one you want, whether you want the base or if you're going to have to pick the primary and secondary combat style. Either way, though, you're yeah. going to be able to mix it up, whether you want to do mage and ranged or maybe you prefer melee and ranged. Um, I think that's going to be pretty interesting. I think that's interesting because you said that it pairs you with people with similar levels to you but then they change your levels. So it's not even like necessarily they're low level. It's you have the same experience with combat. Yeah, so you are going to be, it's it's all going to be normalized, and no matter what is going on, it's all the skills are going to be normalized. So they're going to be the same level as yeah. your opponent. 
Yep. That actually makes it way more interesting because then it's like, all right, who's actually the better PvP here? Yeah, who gets <laughs> who gets luckier? Exactly, who's better? even playing ground. Yeah. So for instance, it'll all be Wait, just kind of like LMS. Um. Yes and no. I think LMS. Does... I've been LMS once, so I don't totally remember. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, I, I thought LMS wasn't a hundred percent equal playing. Actually, field. no, I don't think it is a hundred percent. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's a hundred percent, but I could I could be wrong. I've only done it a couple times. Okay, sorry. Never mind. Continue. Uh, when the fight is complete, you'll be able to return back to where you left off. If you're successful in defeating your opponent, you'll be rewarded with rank points and reward points. Rank points are used to determine your rank when fighting a fight. The PvP arena system will try to match you with another player with a similar rank. So this is an MMR system or a matchmaking rating system. Uh, very similar to if you've ever played anything ever in your life that is ranked, such as League of Legends, Dota, any other more competitive game like Counter-Strike. There is always a either visible or hidden matchmaking ranking system. And this is exactly that, except it's visible. That's so interesting. Yeah, for instance, if you are uh, have a thousand rank points and someone else has a thousand rank points, you have a really high chance of going against them. And if you have three hundred and someone else has a thousand, you have a lot less chance of going against them. Yeah. Um. They just yeah. This just makes it as fair as possible. Not saying that someone that has three hundred points isn't going to be as good as someone that has a thousand points. It's just much more likely to be the case. They have more experience. Yeah. Exactly. And as far as reward points are used to purchase unique items from the PvP Arena reward store. And we'll have more on this below. So they actually have some really cool stuff for the 1v1 tournaments. So I think this is really cool because like they say here, until now, tournaments have been exclusive to the Deadman finals. So <laughs> relatively few players ever get to experience that. <laughs> <laughs> like pretty much anyone no one. ever. No one gets to ever do it. <laughs> yeah, unless you like set this up exclusively or anything like that um, with like on a separate server with like a content creator or something like that. Yeah. Uh, with the introduction of the PvP arena, we're making tournament style play available to everyone. Tournaments offer a way for players to participate in a series of 1v1 fights in succession. If you're good enough to make it to the next round, that is. <laughs> you can let the game form a tournament group for you, selected from the pool of available participants, or have a go at organizing your very own. You can set up your own tournament. Yeah, so that's cool. So if you want, you and your friends could get together and do a 1v1 tournament between you and each other. I was going to say that'd be fun on the a, stream. Uh, precisely. So yeah. if you have a separate stream group or maybe just a um, a chat group in the game already that enjoy PvP or just want to maybe settle a dispute or something like settle that. Settle a dispute. <laughs> then you can We're do that. going to do a tournament. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It says to enter a tournament, simply register your interest via the PvP arena side panel that we talked about earlier. Awesome. Yep. Each tournament consists of anywhere between four to 64 players, and you'll go through in a round robin style. Uh, here's how it might work for a tournament of 16 players. So 16 are divided into eight 1v1 battles. Um, the eight winners from the first round then fight in four 1v1 battles. Then the four goes down to two 1v1s, and then there's a final 1v1 for the actual victory. This sounds like a lot of fun, actually. Yeah, it does sound pretty cool. I want to cool. do a tournament. We can maybe ask on Discord if anyone wants to. <laughs> yeah. It says that you'll receive rank and reward points based on how you play, so give it your all. Also, I feel like this will be an easy way for people to, unless the custom ones don't reward this, I could I could see this being an easy way to like exploit um, like point boosting your rank. Mm. But um, That's I, true. I, I think uh, an easy way to get around that is just to make it so the custom ones don't actually count towards your rank. Yeah. They're just just because. Yeah. Uh, either way, ranked 1v1 duels. If you're hungry for battle but don't want to commit to a full tournament because that can take a little bit of time, so then well. you have ranked 1v1 duels. These are one-off battles where the game will automatically pit you against your opponent of a similar rank. Just like tournaments, the winner of the 1v1 battle will receive rank and reward points. There's also unranked 1v1 duels in case you just want to try something out or play just for fun. These won't reward you any of the rank points. But um, okay. also reward points. So this is really just going to be for fun. You're not going to be getting anything of value of this other than experience. Well, if I don't win anything, what's the point? Exactly. For 
fun. Fun. I don't even know what that means. Gross. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but most excitingly, they have rewards. So it says your time within the arena won't go to waste, even if you aren't able to reach the top ranks. There's going to be loads of rewards waiting to be snatched up with your hard-earned reward points. We haven't given the same love and attention to PvP as we have with other updates, so we'd really like you to be able to provide items that can breathe new life into the scene. Accordingly, the rewards are focused on PvP, so they can... This was a really interesting take, so hopefully people are actually listening to this part. Okay. Um, accordingly, the rewards are focused on PvP, so they can only be used against other players. If any of the non-cosmetic items are equipped, you will simply be unable to attack anything other than players. So that is pretty interesting. That means you can't obviously take them to do bossing or anything like that. And you'll see why, because they are very impactful pieces. I just have less of a reason to do it, though. But um, it's for PvP, yes, so it's not for me. <laughs> yes, and, yes and no. But there's cosmetic, you said. Because you can use them in the wilderness, in PvP worlds, in Castle Wars, Soul Wars, and the Fight Pits. But you can only use them against other players, right? Yes. Okay. Which is nice if you enjoy things like Soul Wars, where it is PvP, but it's like less... I don't That's know, true. You said Soul I... Wars is good for money, too. Soul Wars is fun. It's definitely fun. I could see this being... Uh, very maybe even very important for like gims or ims in general yeah because it's hard to get into soul wars and actually do things that are impactful with being such a low level but <laughs> this will actually hopefully give you a little bit of boost in gear that could be really nice for our gims yeah it says no notice that some of these items are untradeable where they typically be tradable and this is intentional the aim here is to reduce the appeal for illegitimate players but don't worry <laughs> uh certain we're certain these items will still see plenty of use for genuine PvP players. So what's cool is the first thing up is ornament kits. I so, love me an ornament kit. Yeah, right? And they do look, or they, I hope they look cool, but they are for items that don't normally have ornament kits. They're like They are described as cool. Yeah. <laughs> so for a small number of rewards, you'll be able to purchase the following ornament kits. So for you can get a D-Claw ornament kit, which is... <gasps> Pretty cool sounding. Does it say what's going to look like? It doesn't. Uh. <laughs> the Dragon Warhammer ornament kit. Yes. He the Heavy Ballista ornament kit. <laughs> and the Armadil ornament kit, as long as well as the Bandos ornament kit. And this is for all of the gear sets. So for the BCP, Tacits, Boots, uh, and respectively the Armadil Helm, Chestplate, and Chain Skirt. One kit is required for each item. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. So that's cool. actually going to be hard to get that. Yeah. Uh, you'll look really, really cool if you're able to get a full set. That'd of, be such a flex. Of this, along with the ornamented ballista, warhammer, and claws. That would be really badass right. looking. I mean, depending on this looks, I might be willing to do this for cool ornament kit colors. Yeah. <laughs> so these ones, um, I do believe you can wear anywhere because they are not they're not um, pvp things. they're not pvp related they're just cosmetic related so you can use these anywhere perfect as far as i understand um we're limiting on how many kits they can offer at the moment so if you have a favorite you'd rather see in this list be sure to let us know because they i don't it seems like they're not planning on implementing all of these right away mm -hmm. so if you do have a preference make sure to let them know um they are also going to be adding new blighted sacks so a new uh, Blighted Wave Sack that supplies the runes for any of the wave spells as well as any of oh, the Surge spells. That's pretty cool. Yeah, they are untradeable. So this is strictly just for any of these duel duels and stuff like that. Or, of course, any of the PvP areas that we mentioned before. Yeah. Um, as far as imbuing. So this is really cool because imbued items normally only really come from Nightmare Zone and more recently Soul Wars. Yeah. Um, given this is predominantly a PvP activity, it felt fitting to expand on this offering by giving players the chance to purchase imbue scrolls for a low price from the PvP arena shop. So for anyone that doesn't know, I'm pretty certain whenever you um, die with an imbued item, it unimbues it okay. and you have to go re-imbue it which is pretty annoying usually. And this is mainly <laughs> just for like wilderness PKing and stuff like that. Cause mm -hmm. obviously when you die in soul wars, it doesn't do this, but it's not a big deal. Yeah. What's nice about this is you can, um, these would be untradeable and would allow players to imbue the following items, the black mask, all of the salves, all of the Dagonoth rings, Jeez. the ring of the gods, tyrannical ring, treasonous ring, 
Ring of Suffering, Granite Ring, and Slayer Helm. So almost every ring. Yeah, pretty much everything <laughs> that you can imbue, this would allow you to imbue, which is nice. For people who don't like Nightmare Zone or Soul Wars. Yeah, or if you're just on an account that doesn't have many points for oh. Nightmare Zone. This and Nightmare could Zone be... could be kind of expensive initially. Yeah, exactly. So this could be a really nice upgrade for certain accounts or just anyone in general. Definitely. As far as a quick note, they say that all the rewards from this point on in the blog act the same way. If you die with them in PvP, they transform into a broken version and money is dropped on or to the player killer. Okay. You must then take them to Purdue to be repaired. So, oh, pretty so you don't si- totally lose them. No, pretty similar to a lot of other items and how they act now. That's cool. And of course, uh, Trooper Parchments do work on these um, if you don't want to constantly go to Purdue. <laughs> Um, but these are pretty interesting items. These are actually very impactful and for certain accounts will be very big deals. Definitely. So for the first one, this is going to be the wristbands of the arena. So this is going to be the Barrow's Gloves equivalent. These are untradeable alternatives to Barrow's Gloves. They have very similar stats, but with slightly higher accuracy. Um, typically the Barrow's Gloves require 41 defense to equip, but these would only require 30 and of course, you don't need to do the entire um, recipe for disaster quest <laughs> Which line. Which take forever. Yes, exactly. Wait, so, is this something that's PvP only? Yeah, all yeah. of, all of okay. these items that we're going to be going over are going to be PvP only. Okay, great. Yeah. And so, yeah, very similar stats to Barrow's Gloves. Very, very low requirements. Just 30 defense and, of course, no quest lines. As far as the next stuff, if you want to skip the Barbarian Assault, you can now. Because the new <laughs> item, the Centurion's Caras is a lost artifact and it has just been unearthed on, once donned by the, only the mightiest warriors. The sandy and well-worn armor is now a relic of what once was, a symbol of the arena's past fortune and a hope that it may thrive once again. So a dustier version of the fighter's torso. Yes, so this is <laughs> going to have very similar stats to the torso, but with slightly higher defensive stats and it requires 40 defense to equip. Okay. Pretty cool. And then they're going to have the Calamity Chest and Breaches. The names are so cool for all of these, by the way. Yeah, a lot of these names are really (laughs) cool. So this is going to be the untradeable PvP variant of Void Armor. And just like Void Armor, you'll need the full set for the effects to really work. It does have, of course, the three interchangeable helmets that do require, um, are required for the activation of the set. The armor does have low defense, so it's risky in PvP, and requires the wearer to be good at predicting their opponent's next move and quickly switching gear to reduce incoming damage. It comes in three tiers, allowing for flexibility with different PvP builds. So this is, honestly, all this seems like it's a really good idea for PvP in general. It would be really interesting to see what people know or are saying, though. Yeah, we don't know. It sounds cool to us, but it could be awful. Yeah. I would have no idea. Because this does seem cool. So there is the Calamity Chest and Breaches, which have very low defenses, um, no bonuses unless you're wearing one of the helmets. Um, And then you take a... But they have no requirements. So that's pretty cool. So you can do this on a... Like the purest of pures. Nice. You can wear this gear. And it gives you very small amounts of defense just because. But once you bump it up to the superior calamity chest and breaches then this requires 55 defense and gives you a lot more defense we're talking (laughs) like 10x oh my gosh and then finally the elite calamity chest and breaches so these require 78 defense but they give you a lot of defenses we're talking like 70 plus on the chest as well as 50 plus on the breaches and so moving on to the helmets we are going to have again three helmets one for each style of combat and also for each different um like level so we're gonna have the original one it's gonna give you a 7.5 percent increase to your melee damage and accuracy uh next is gonna be the one that requires 55 defense but it's gonna give you 10 percent damage and then the final one that's gonna be 78 defense is gonna give you 12.5 percent extra damage so overall this is pretty cool it's going to give you a little bit of damage options for everything between having no requirements to some requirements to near max yeah so overall i it sounds good to two non-pvpers yeah it sounds good to some ignorant players yeah 
Let us know if you are a PvP or if you like this or don't like this. Yeah. And for anyone that was wondering, just to clarify, they are going to have three different styles of helmet for range, mage, and melee, as well as three different styles per combat choice. So oh. there's nine total helmets. Wow, that's a lot of helmets. Okay. Uh, yeah. So yeah. depending on the requirements, as well as your fighting style. Okay. But they do um, continue to say that in addition to the juicy loot they've proposed so far, we'd also like to open the discussion on some other rewards, an amulet that can save you from critical PvP damage with a cooldown, a potion that grants immunity from future binding spells, and wow, yeah, right, and a new left-click teleport that can be used up to level 30 wilderness. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, they do continue to say that they're not entirely sure about the designs of these ones, so they thought it'd be best just to put them out there and see what everyone thinks. So, let not, what you think. Not only let us think what you are thinking about this in let the comments know below. What you think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, not only let us know what you think in the comments below, but also go and if you are a PvP and this matters to you, let Jagex know that um, this is a good or bad idea for the next few items or any of these items that we've just been talking about. I like your little telepathy thing. You're like, let us think what you think. Send us your brain waves. Uh, I forgot that you don't have telepathy. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I thought I was the mind freak here, not you. Nope. Okay. Um, as far <laughs> as the first item, we have the Amulet of Souls. So this is the amulet what they're talking name. about. <laughs> this is essentially a, um, a like a fury, but okay. um, like better. So you can use this by combining a fury and an uh, onyx as well as an Amulet of Souls scroll. Uh, which is going to be a new item, of course. And what this does is every 15 minutes, it is going to make it so that if you take fatal damage, instead of dying, you'll recover back to 5 HP and be cured of any poison or venoms. Oh. So that's pretty interesting. That reminds me of like the Ring of Life. Yeah, it's exactly like but that. But it doesn't tell you out, so you'd probably just die again. Yeah, but maybe it the next... It gives you a chance to run. Maybe one of the next items could help you out in that. Oh, okay. But um, the next item here is going to be the potions they talked about. So there's going to be the Flame Roses. It's a stackable herb lore ingredient. And combining that with Dwarf Weed, White Lily, and some water will give you the Thaw Potion. This can be consumed to grant immunity from binding from binding spells for 10 seconds. So that's actually that's really cool. <laughs> That'll definitely save your life. That would have saved my life in the few times I've done PvP. So it would have saved my life really in the cool. few times I didn't do PvP but got attacked by PvPers. Yeah, that's mainly what I <laughs> Um, as far as the final item, this is also what they mentioned, is the one-click teleport. So currently, the only one-click teleport that can be used in 30 Wilderness is the Royal Seed Pod, which, of Best course, in the game. does have quite a few, uh, you know, requirements to get. <laughs> so, a couple. Uh, mainly Monkey Madness, too. That little thing. <laughs> yeah. So uh, for most accounts that don't want this, this will be a potentially huge change for them. Because it's going to make it so that you can obviously use one clicks in 30 Wilderness. Of course, you have options, other options that aren't one click, but this will be just a lot easier and nicer to use. Yeah, but, someone's um, like combo hitting you over and over and you just need to get out of there. Yes, of course. And so this will be big for any peers because they even do mention here that, um, of course, uh, Monkey Madness 2 does grant defense experience. So most peers will not be doing this. Oh, and yeah, um, so this will give that. you a new option. But that's going to be it for the PvP update. Um, a lot of changes proposed. They do seem pretty cool overall, but it would be interesting to hear. Usually we are pretty positive on these things, mostly because of one, ignorance, and two, because they do sound like good ideas usually. They sound nice. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, let us know what you think, uh, whether we should be more concerned about this or whether it actually does seem like a good idea to everyone. Yeah, I'm very interested. Uh, as far as the last thing we wanted, or as far as the second to last thing we wanted to go over, is going to be the uh, game improvements blog. I'm so excited <laughs> about this. <laughs> so for poll 76, there is quite a bit to go over. Like I said, we're not going to be covering all of it, so make sure to check it out in its full extent if you are more interested in it. As far as poll question number one, they are going to be going over and changing the rarity of third age items from elite clues. Well, they're asking if they should. They're asking, but they, they, it's actually a bug in the game whenever they introduced um, Gilded onto the same uh, drop as Third Age. Apparently, there was a bug with Elite Clues specifically, and so they weren't dropping Third Age um, in the appropriate amount. 
And it's funny because people were saying that you should just change it without pulling it because <laughs> it's clearly a bug. Yeah, their argument. Okay, so this was like a mistake that was made years ago. And they were like, yeah, it's a mistake. So we want to fix it. But we want to say, yeah. And everyone's like, if it's a mistake, just do it. But they're like, well, like it's been out for years. So yeah. it's no longer a mistake. It's just like the way the game is now. <laughs> yeah, they're going to have to pull it because that's you could use that same methodology for the blowpipe. Yeah. But, um, obviously, that was a big fiasco. <laughs> Um, for the next one, it says, should we add clue scrolls to each floor of the Hallowed Sepulchre? As explained in uh, Pulse 76, so this would just add easy, medium, medium, hard, elite, and elite going from floors 1 to 5, as mm -hmm. well as the Grand Coffer. And so this is just make it so that you get more rewards whenever you are doing um, Hallowed Sepulchre. I think that'd be really nice to have clue scrolls there. It, yeah, it would be I'd nice. I'd see more clue scrolls everywhere. Yeah, I, definitely, <laughs> I loved clues. I definitely think it would be a warm welcome because people that don't do them probably wouldn't care. Although it could potentially like dilute the reward pool a little bit um, if it is like on the same reward scale as like other stuff. Maybe. But um, as, as I think most people would think this is a pretty nice update. Yeah. So the next one is saying, how about the ability to sort your quest list by various criteria? Love, love, love this. <laughs> <laughs> I This is huge. So you could sort by the following, which is classic, status, difficulty, storyline, start location, recommended combat level, release year, alphabetically, free, slash member, or type. Massive. Absolutely massive, you guys. <laughs> As someone who enjoys questing, this is a game changer. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't think this was that big a deal, but it's nice to see that other people are liking it. Am I even excited? <laughs> they, I saw this on Twitter and even responded and was like, this is amazing. <laughs> that's so funny. I didn't even know what this was. Oh, yeah. Uh, he was about to scroll past this. And I, I was. was. Like, I was like pointing at the screen. <laughs> They say that within each category, entries are sorted alphabetically, unless sorting by storyline or release year. You can also add filters to hide any of the following, being mini quests, quests not started, quests in progress, completed quests, quests you lack the requirements for, and quests you lack the recommended levels to complete. You guys, so, this would have been so huge. Remember cool. I first became members and I was having to look up quests that reward agility and then I was like, oh, but you have to do this. And then just going from like wiki page to wiki page trying to find out like what quest can I start on? Yeah. And the quick glimpse snapshot they show is one that shows how many is completed, how many quest points you have, and then also it can potentially break down your quest list into things such as Elemental Workshop would be put into its own, little category. Its own category. And in that category, it would have Elemental Workshop 1 and 2. And it would have the, it's kind of like how the bundles worked in leagues. It is. And they're probably getting a lot of good feedback about that. Because I didn't yeah. even know what was part of the same storyline until I did this. Until yeah. leagues. And then I was like, oh, what the heck? This is kind of cool. Exactly. Because I don't think, uh, like, for for instance, they also show the elf quest. And I think the elf quests have so many quests in them. A lot of people don't know that. I didn't know that Plague City and Biohazard were elf quests. Yeah, Plague City, <laughs> Biohazard, they, like, allow you entrance into, like, the starting area for Underground Pass, which gives you uh, entrance to into Lydia. Roving Elves, which gives you access into Morning's End. It's crazy. Yeah, so. I love this idea. Yeah, so potentially you could be adding that if you so wish. Yes. This is the next one I have so <laughs> So poll question four is asking, should we automatically insure pets? Cats Woo! and pet rocks would not automatically you know insure. What? I'm going to say cats should be insured because now that I've been trying to raise kittens, it is annoying when you die. <laughs> yeah. But um, so this is really interesting because I didn't even know about this, but we were already talking about this at the beginning of the podcast where people can die upon getting a pet oh yeah whenever you were talking about it i was like he doesn't even know dude yeah i already knew this so i was like i can't wait for you to get to this part yeah but for instance even like a simple mistake like maybe you're doing kraken you get the pet that's an extremely afk boss you start the next one your internet cuts out you die and lose the pet yeah that's something that can legitimately happen it's not your fault except for maybe you should have been paying attention a little bit more i mean no one could blame you if your internet cuts out <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly so like maybe you didn't realize on the last kill you got the pet until obviously you were already in the next boss fight and then you die because your internet cuts out and you're it's just gone yeah so this would prevent that and obviously it would save everyone 500k on the first round which is pretty nice it's absolutely huge yeah so that that could potentially be really cool uh the next one is should we make the change that if you would have been followed by a pet it would not be lost but instead be reclaimable from pabita for a reclaimed fleet of 1 million GP. This would not count for duplicate pets. Yes. 
Yeah. How is this not already a thing? And this is because they say that in even rarer circumstances, player may receive a message letting them know that they would have been followed if they achieved a pet drop f well, with a follower out and a full inventory. While I we've taken measures that. to prevent this happening, for instance, this is a really um, rare thing to happen. But for instance, if you are mining or woodcutting and you are doing it with your Vorkath pet out and you happen to get the squirrel or the beaver, sorry, and or the rock elemental, then technically you would have got a pet, but it actually disappears and you don't have that pet. Yeah, if your inventory is full, it will yeah disappear. Because you can easily have a full inventory and not realize it and have your pet out just to be flexing your PvE pet. Yeah. And then you just give up the chance of getting another pet. I would also like to say I'm doing blood belts and I forgot what the insatiable mutate blood belt looked like until it just popped up and I was like, oh my God. Yeah, it looks pretty gross. Uh, but yeah, I think that's like so ridiculous. I saw a good point too a couple months ago actually before they announced this where someone was like, the way the system is now, it kind of discourages you from carrying around pets because oh, if yeah. you have pets and you have full inventory, you I cannot don't. get another pet. Yeah, when I, like for I don't those, take my pet anymore those two instances skilling. I just mentioned, whenever I'm mining and whenever I am woodcutting, I don't bring my vork. Yeah, I don't bring my pet with me basically anywhere. Yeah. Because I'm like, oh, well, what if I get like a boss pet or what if I get a skilling pet? The way yeah. it is now, like pets the, are supposed to be a flex and you can't really take them anywhere. The very rare occasions I bring a pet is if I'm like thieving or if I'm doing agility. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, you just definitely don't need them there. It's just too stressful. So I think that one's definitely going to get approved. Yeah. Uh, as far as poll number six, it says, if question number four passes, should we allow players to reclaim any pet that they've already unlocked in their collection log or bank placement from Provita for the usual reclaim fee of one million? This would be I love this. a retroactive thing. So for any of those unfortunate people we just mentioned. Yeah, like someone who's at Zolra, as they're dying, they see that they would have gotten something. Yeah. They could just go and reclaim it. So that's going to be a lot of people being able to go and claim pets that they previously wouldn't have been able to. And I'm so excited for them if that gets approved. Yeah, exactly. And... Uh, I'm like, for... I have strong feelings about all these. I'm so like pumped up right now talking about it. Clearly. Uh, for number seven, <laughs> it says, if question four passes, should a player's previously paid pet insurance count towards a coffer from Probita to be used for the purchases of reclaiming unlocked pets? Um, I mean, this one I'm not. That one I don't have an opinion yeah, on. Yeah, I don't really care either way. I mean, 500K <laughs> is a lot, but also if you have a pet, it's not that much because at that point you have a lot of money. I mean, anyone could get a pet. You could just get a skilling pet day one you're playing. Uh, true. I guess so. It's just not very common. So I don't really see it as being that big of a problem. Yeah, I'll probably vote for whatever's cheaper, but I don't feel any type of way about that one. The other ones, obviously, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I felt some type of way. Yeah. On this one, I'll <laughs> probably just pass, honestly, because I just don't really carry the way. Yeah. Uh, for the number eight, it says, should the quantity of combat achievement kill count tasks be significantly reduced? Um, I think so in general. Yes. Because, for Some instance, crazy. they have one here that says the Chamber of Zarek Grandmaster kill count is currently 250 KC, and they want to bring it down to 50 KC. So, I mean, I think this is good because, honestly, the difference between getting 50 KC and 250 KC is just that you spent, you know, 100 extra hours doing it. Not that you are that much better. Yeah, they even pointed out, too, that some tasks feel longer than necessary and others take almost 100 hours to complete. Yeah. And there shouldn't be, I mean, I know it's supposed to be the best of the best in combat achievements, but it's kind of insane to expect somebody to spend 100 hours on a single boss for these things. That's, that's actually hilarious. I just came up with the 100 hours because I was like, oh, if you I thought you read did, it. If you efficiently did 30 minutes per run, it would take you 100 hours to get those extra 200 KC. No, yeah, it's literally 100. Yeah. <laughs> So that's, yeah, that's really funny. I would definitely be in favor of doing that. Not that oh, it yeah. will matter to me anytime soon. But I mean, I maybe in the down. future. Yeah. And just to help everyone else, there's nothing wrong with quality of life improvements, guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, besides that, they do go through and talk about a bunch of additional stuff. Um, this is for all for question number nine, which is a very, I guess, big question because there's a lot going on here. <laughs> it says, should we add a toggleable setting that would display a new hit splat when you hit an NPC with your max hit. So just be if you want to be like, oh my god, that was huge. Is that my max hit? And they'll be like, it was. Yeah. <laughs> um, overall, I think it, I mean, that would be fine. It's yeah. not crazy. I'll go yeah on it because it'd be cool to see if that happens sometimes. I don't really care, but I know some people would probably be like losing their minds about it. Yeah, currently it's it's easy to get your max hit or to know what your max hit I is. I don't know what mine is. Uh, you could just go to, you go to a any, house, right? yeah, any party world house that's maxed and go hit the uh, the punching bag there, and it'll give but you your max. But if you're iron, 
if you're iron then yeah i guess it's a little more <laughs> annoying but you, there's calculators and stuff for this so i just don't see it being that big a problem but who wants to do the math oh uh, yeah <laughs> um for number 10 it says should we improve the magic defenses of v's shield by plus five and remove the negative offense bonus to range magic i cannot for the life of me remember how to get v's shield it is, is that a from slayer thing? the no it's from the um i think it's Isn't from the fremnic shield the fremnic trials thing? quest oh god yeah or no. maybe the fremnic exiles quest i'll probably skip this or i'll read more about oh yeah that. it says from fremnic exiles quest oh <laughs> uh yeah i don't know um, I mean, I'll have to read what other people think. That'd be fine. It says, um, what we could do is to make V-Shield feel more a pro, uh, more of a proper upgrade for Slayer is remove the negative defenses and add the improved magic defenses. I, I mean, think this would be nice. Because nice, there's a lot of stuff added in quests that people get and never use again. Yeah. So I'd I, be cool with making anything more usable. I have used V-Shield for um, Slayer before. So uh, yeah, this would be an uh, interesting like welcome change. I guess it wouldn't be that big yeah. a deal, but it'd be nice. I agree. Next up, I love, but people are bitter, so I don't know if they'll pass. Okay. Okay, so number 11 and 12 are directly related to each other. It says, should Bryophyta's staff become a free-to-play item? Yes. I would say yes. Just because people can't afford to play or pay for this game doesn't mean that they can't have things to you guys. Um, yeah. <laughs> And for number 12, that's directly related. It says, if it passes, should Briofita's Essence also be available to drop as a free-to-play? No. <laughs> um, yeah, it just seems no, like they, it, would, yeah. it would go hand-in-hand. Hand. I don't know why you'd have one without the other. So, you know, this is so, like, kind of related. A few weeks ago, there was, like, a poll about the Rift Guardian. And, you know, there's, like, a ring. And they were like, oh, should the ring be droppable and free-to-play? I didn't realize that was the only question that people voted no on. Yeah, that was weird. I don't... And it's it was, like, by 1%. And I think that someone pointed out that most of the people voting are literally pay-to-play, and they're just being mean for no reason. Yeah, I don't I, I don't, don't understand why people vote no on pay-to-play. I'm like, we're not more special because we pay to play this game, you guys. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, game. obviously, even in free-to-play, high alking is still one of the best methods of making money, if not just straight up the best method of making money in mm -hmm. free-to-play. And um, this would just make it a little bit easier. And if you are like really into free to play, then this would be really cool for you. So yeah, it, it wouldn't really matter to me. I uh, I'm all about adding whatever to free to play. I don't care. Yeah, I do want more free to play I mean, content. For I sure. would obviously love if this entire game were free to play. Let's be real here. <laughs> oh, poll question number thirteen seems like it'd be really cool and okay. something they should have had in the game a long time ago. So it says, should we add a combat ring with safe death and a party room chest and lever to the clan hall? Finally! We've, we've talked, talked about this before. About this. Whenever it came out, it came out in May of last year. We were talking about we want to have a drop party, but we had to go and do it in Paldor. Yeah. Uh, it feels like we're gonna have to make a new clan at this point no one's ever online <laughs> this feels like the perfect reason to have a clan yes is for the clan hall events like this so it's been a long time coming hopefully that passes yeah hopefully now we could actually start now i'm more excited in, about clan things now i want to start recruiting people again <laughs> uh for question number 14 should we allow increased npc visibility in the fight caves similar to the inferno I didn't um, even know yeah. this was a thing. Apparently in the Inferno, you can actually see where stuff's spawning from far away. Yeah. Which I love that because whenever I'm trying to figure out where Jad will spawn later, like you can see, you can see early on where this one little blob spawns. And I hate having to like run around in a circle and be like, where's he spawning? Where's he spawning? Where's he spawning? <laughs> trying yeah. to figure out where he's coming from. Yeah. This would make it a little bit easier, honestly. It, it wouldn't matter too much either way, but it would be nice. I'd like it a lot. It would be a little bit of a quality This is like my most life. favorite poll thing that we've had in so long. I'm getting like so hype over here. Well, don't here. get too excited because this will probably take like three years to implement, but. Uh, thanks. I, I, think <laughs> I think they still have like are implementing stuff from 75. Why would uh, you say this? For number 15, should we be able to toggle or add a toggle for the smoke in the desert smoke dungeon? This could be toggled by right clicking. And this will just provide extra clarity. Clarity, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it, there's some people who struggle to see it. It looks awful in there. Yeah, especially um, if you have like bad eyesight, or imagine if you're like colorblind, that might be kind of frustrating too. Uh, I have fully perfect vision. You're like I've had LASIK and I awful. hate it. <laughs> uh, should we add a fishing net spawn inside the fishing guild? Uh, How is that not a thing? Yes. Yeah, instead it would be Iron Man friendly, but it it yeah, be everyone it's friendly. It's kind of weird there wasn't one. Uh, should we add more items to the fishing guild store? This would include items. Um, 
including rods, harpoons, nets, and small nets. Yeah. Just Again, seems, how is this not already? <laughs> seems appropriate. Uh, number 18 is on the smithing interface. Should we allow players to use the spacebar to smith last item? Yes. Yeah. Uh, for number 19, on the Joel crafting interface, should we allow... Yep. Yeah. Same thing. Same thing. Smithing? Craft list item. I was like, you still have to say it out loud, Robert. They can't. Nope. <laughs> They're not reading this. Should we have a left click cook option to the rogue's den um, and barbarian, barbarian village fires? Yes. Uh, yeah, sure. I like that. Yeah, it doesn't matter either way. Uh, should we make the Pharaoh's scepter one-handed? Ooh. I like this. Sure. Yeah. That'll just make it so you save your inventory spots so you don't have to like unequip both your items. Yeah. For poll 22, should we give the ability of the Hellhounds, including Cerberus, to occasionally drop an insult head? Ooh, I like insult heads, yes. The drop rate would be a 1 in 40, with the drop rate of Cerberus being 1 in 15. I like that. I actually really yeah. enjoy going and uh, doing the reanimated That'd be nice things. because Hellhounds don't drop anything as anything it stands. Anything that you guys can add to the Hellhounds. Now that we have the ashes and we have the clues, I'm like, all right, let's get a couple more things, maybe more than two. <laughs> yeah. Um, this next one would be actually a really nice quality of life which be uh making the mossy giant keys and the giant keys stackable i didn't even know this wasn't a thing until i read it i thought they were i've just never gotten more than one at a time no yeah they're definitely not stackable it just seems obvious to me (laughs) yeah um 24 is should we send you a login message to alert you when you have items stored in an item retrieval service this would have a toggle via the settings menu. Yes. I think this would be really important for some accounts. So, yeah. I agree. I didn't even know. I'll just have it toggled off. But, yeah. I would keep it on because that actually happened to me the other day. I, like, I guess I died and I didn't have important stuff. But I had a couple things at item retrieval and I, like, went to go to this instance area. And they are like, are you sure you have stuff? And I was like, wait, I have stuff? And I, like, went and reclaimed it. It was just, like, tar. But oh, still, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's good to know. It, yeah, it would be good to know. Um, for number 25, which I think think is uh, we have two left so for 25 uh should we allow players to instantly acquire slime and bone meal when clicking claim slime on robin i do not even know what this is in reference oh, it to. says that players have been teleporting away by accident without pressing the space bar after the di- dialogue so that means that he'll talk to you before he hands it to you That's so, so you funny. like click it and you're like all right time to go you never actually got anything oh okay okay <laughs> Yeah, that has happened to me before. Yeah, you shouldn't have to speak to him. Like, have a full-on conversation to get your things. Yeah. Uh, should we remove... This is for 26. Should we remove the existing delay after using Essence on runecrafting altars? Yes, actually. This is really annoying for me. <laughs> I've never noticed this. Yeah, because um, this would also increase your XP per hour, which would be nice. Yeah. But whenever you Ooh, go... Easy scape. Yeah, easy scape. Wow. Whenever you go up to an <laughs> altar and you use it, it, you like do an animation and then there's a delay and then you can teleport away. So it actually is oh, just actually, no, really I know long. exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, it is really long. This and next one I love. For the final question, this is poll numbers 27. Should we introduce an additional fairy ring to the Soul Wars Island as shown on poll 76 blog? Yes, yeah, up on the north side of the island. It is on the very north side of the island and I think this would be great this would be huge because there's mahoganies nearby i've gone to get i think it's mahoganies it might be a different country but i've gone to do those and having to run over there i think took me legitimately five minutes to my gim because i couldn't run i think you're talking about teaks oh teaks then yeah whatever the tree was there i was trying to do it on like a gim and it was a nightmare getting up to the north side of the island yeah i've done that run multiple times and it's not like the worst i wouldn't call it a nightmare but it is unnecessary it's like five minutes of like walking that's a nightmare in this game. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's pretty unnecessary. So yeah, I'd oh, be yeah. down with that. I really like That'd that. That'd be really one. cool. And more fairy rings just seems cool. Fairy rings are like my favorite transportation in the game. Yeah. But uh, that is going to be about it for the blog changes. That's so, it? Only 27 questions? Yeah, like I said, a <sighs> lot to go over. I'm excited that there's so much this week. I'm feeling very like hype right now. Yeah. And I got a full totem from doing blood builds. Spoiler alert, everyone. So... I get to try Skatiza tonight. Maybe I'll be back with the Skatiza pet and claw update next week. Maybe. I just jinxed myself. While that, I'm not getting anything. I, I didn't want to forget to mention, while that is the end of it for the poll questions, there are a couple of unpolled changes Ooh. that they're going to be introducing as part of poll 76. Okay. So they're going to be looking to allow Soul Wars to be playable in every world. And they Wait, think you this can't would... play in every world? No. I didn't even know that. Yeah, there's specific worlds for it. 
I thought um, it was like Winter Shot where there's specific roles where you can play anywhere. No. Weird. It says, uh, we think this would entice organized clans to go do their own world and allow players to enjoy the sport of it to play more competitively on themed worlds. That's nice. Yeah, this will be nice because sometimes you get in there and there's like a clan uh, of just like 10 people that just like are slaughtering because they're <laughs> just like so, so much better. And they could just play on their own. Yeah. And back in April, they also mentioned that they're looking into allow players to buy X in the other tab of Soul Wars. Uh, players will also be able to purchase blighted items and spoils in custom quantities. This will be really nice. Uh, finally, we also will be looking at increasing the XP from Soul Wars rewards. Oh. Um, we originally communicated that the XP would be equivalent to intermediate pest control at around 80,000 XP per hour. Who's getting 80,000? 80,000 XP in an hour at intermediate pest control. Yeah, I don't know. But it's, <laughs> they do say that. However, at present, players achieve around 60,000 per hour at best. For this reason, we'll be adjusting the XP calculations to better reflect what was pulled, ensuring that the players spending their zeal tokens receive the ex intended XP for their efforts in the minigame. I'm just in shock that they're so out of touch they think I'm getting that much of pest control. No, that's what they're saying. So they're saying that they thought everyone was going to be getting 80, but they're getting around 60. And this, I think, is them including not only the experience you get, but also spending your points on experience after the fact. Oh my gosh, yeah. I didn't so, think about how you could spend the points. Yeah, that's actually a really big way for some GIM to get up their prayer. That's smart. But uh, that is actually going to be it for the poll 76. Nice. So a lot to go over. A lot of changes. If you feel like you missed anything or if we didn't go over anything, of course, head over to the actual OSRS news page and check it out for yourself. Yes. We are going to be closing out this episode, though, with a question that we got on Instagram. Shout out, Matt. Your boy, Matt. Shout out. So, Matt asked and also said that I could read this whole text below. Hi, Boon Vapors. First of all, I love that. Everyone's okay. a Boon Vapor who listens. I'm currently doing my master's thesis, and I'm curious about the following. If you were to do a master's thesis on something RuneScape related, what would it be? My master's thesis is on pre-development project management in the green energy sector, but if I were to do something OSRS related, it'd be on the OSRS in-game economy. Super excited to hear your answers. I think this is my favorite question I've asked. Oh, really? First of all, kudos to you. What? I didn't go to college and even just reading what you're doing your master's thesis on. I was like, what does this even mean? Yeah. So I didn't know what a master's thesis was, everyone. Also, also originally, I thought they were saying that they were actually doing their master's thesis on OSRS. That would right have now. been sick. <laughs> but I don't know how that would have gone over. I don't know how it works. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so I looked it up because I didn't even know what this meant. I knew it, like a general idea of what a thesis was, but I didn't really get it. Yeah. It says, a thesis or dissertation is a document submitted in support of candidature for an academic degree, a professional qualification presenting the author's research and findings. And I still didn't totally get that. So I kind of just came up with an idea and talked about it to Robert it's, and see if just, he <laughs> thinks it's good. It's just research. Yeah. So I was thinking mine would be on like a correlation between people's <laughs> levels of happiness based on like how much RuneScape they play. Like, you know, casual players versus like everyday sweaty players and seeing like who's happier. And I think I'd probably be disappointed by these results. Yeah, probably. But uh, I think that'd be interesting to know. I was also thinking about like stress levels compared like people who play a lot and don't play a lot. But then he pointed out like people who play a lot probably don't have as much going on in real life. So they might be less stressed. Yeah. So that's what I had to think. There's a lot more variables involved with that one. But yeah, that's that's my idea. What about you? Um, For me, I think that your economy idea is probably the best one. I think one. that's the best. As soon as I read that, I was like, well, yeah, shoot. But yeah. Um, <laughs> My second idea would probably be uh, have to, having to do with um, happiness and player retention and satisfaction across multiple um, MMOs, including RS, and seeing which one has the highest value and to what the reason was, whether that being they have better reward systems or better progression systems, or if the end game is more desirable for whatever reason or mm -hmm. if just they like the look of the game better or something like that like if you can put like a quantitative value of why certain games are more successful in the long run that sounded way more well said than what i said well yeah <laughs> robert actually went to college for a little bit i oh, didn't yeah. go at all for like a day or two yeah more than me 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, I guess I thought that was a very answer. interesting question because that actually made me have to think more than like any question ever before. Yeah. It also made me have to research because I was like, I don't really know what a thesis is. <laughs> and now you still don't. And now I have a slightly better understanding, but I still don't really get it. <laughs> but you know, I'm not going to college, so it's fine. <laughs> well, I think that's going to be it. Yeah. What are you going to be working on this week? Uh, so this much week, RuneScape, right? I am going to be working on so much RuneScape. If RuneScape was called Lost Ark, that is. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, there is going to be a weekly reset for lost ark tomorrow which means i'm gonna have a lot more to do tomorrow wait does that mean they're starting over at level zero no 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 oh no. i was like that's lame. Uh, for games like this and like world of warcraft and a lot of games you can only kill certain bosses like once a week oh i remember you doing that during world of warcraft yeah so this just means that it resets on thursday so you can kill those bosses again oh perfect okay yeah so it's pretty cool are you gonna be making any lost ark videos this week you think um that's in the works that's a good question Michelle. that is a good question <laughs> so they are in the works uh i don't want to say when they'll come out but yeah i am working on them all right what are you doing <laughs> um i'm hoping to make at least one video because we haven't been putting out a lot of videos and i'd like to take some of that responsibility on myself oh wow i also want to be streaming more and i want to be working on my secret secret collabs more because i've been slack lacking on super those. secret one of them shouldn't even take that long. I'm just lazy. Yeah, big I could have finished that one in like days and I've been working on it for weeks because I just can't stay focused. True. <laughs> so hopefully I can focus up and do that. The birthday one, I think would be easy. I think I could probably do that in like 20 minutes. So that's why I'm like, oh, I could do this. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> that one would be really fast. Hopefully, uh, hopefully I could get that done maybe out tomorrow, the day you're listening to this. So yeah, you will know. Just check our channel. You will know. Just check our channel. And if it's not there, then I'm probably not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> or or I like messed up and uh, quit. <laughs> Pretty easy check. Yeah, easy check. Is it there? Eh. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm also just going to be doing random stuff on RuneScape. Maybe some more Zolcano. I want to do some more Slayer too because I'd like to get to Skatizo. I At least I could go today. I'm going to wait till I'm on stream to go. Yeah. In case I get the pet. Cool. <laughs> Maybe. But yeah, you guys can come check me out on stream. Like I said, I stream five days a week. Uh, Twitch.tv slash boonbabe. Our schedule is also up on there. So you can check that out and know when we're going to be on. I would recommend turning on the notifications for it because even with notifications on, it doesn't always tell everyone. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> definitely not good. Also, if you really want to stay up to date, we have a notifications channel on our Discord. Yes, we do. Oh my gosh, I always forget about that. Yeah, Please and you can also Discord. join our Discord and look at pets and talk to us about RuneScape. And some pictures of your tattoos. Yeah. I want to see all the pets and all the tattoos and yeah. everything. <laughs> so that's going to be about it. Where else can they find us? Yeah, you can find us on Twitter at Boonbabe OSRS. See our updates on trying to get these stray cats that live in a colony near us to love us. True. Spoiler alert, they haven't been showing up as much lately. It's been colder. And uh, other than that, you can follow us on Instagram at Boonbabe and our YouTube. Of course, if you're watching on YouTube right now, you'll know our, it's just Boonbabe. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube.com slash Boonbabe. But yeah, thank you all for listening so much. We really appreciate it, as always. Of course, and have a wonderful rest of your week. Thanks for listening. We'll see you all very soon. Bye-bye. Meet Merp. Bye-bye. What's that from? Shh.